Right. Jeffrey Osborne and uh, Pebo Bryson in town tomorrow night for the Legend Concert at the Arena Theater. Tickets still available at the arenatheater.com. I'm about to come out of my skin because this man has no idea how many nights we've been together, sir. Your music has just been a staple to my heart. So thank you. Well, well I want to thank you because, you know, you not only uh, listen, you played my music to everyone here in Houston and, and you, you know, all over the country, actually. So if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be still sitting here. I appreciate you, <clears> sir. You know what I mean? So Jeffrey Osborne. Just celebrated his 70th birthday. Oh, you, you yeah. You told us a key. Uh. A key to some of that longevity. That's right. A change of diet? A change of diet. Well, you know, I started about five years ago and I changed uh, to this alkaline water. It's called okay. Kangen water. So I have a machine that uh, we have at the house. We hook up to our faucet. So I started drinking this alkaline water and it started really making me feel good. I started cleansing, getting rid of some of the toxins. And then I decided since I turned 70, it was mm -hmm. like, why don't I just preserve a few more years? So I went on and became a vegan. So I'm a straight vegan now. I have no uh, meat in my diet, no chicken in my diet, no fish in my diet, no dairy in my diet. It's a plant-based diet, and uh, I've been on this since uh, August, and uh, I feel better than I've ever felt. Well, you Amazing. look super good, sir. Well, you thank you. And, and again, I'm, su I'm curious because... My 65th is coming up on this October. So All right. I said, let's, let's, as grandma was saying, I'm going to run on and see what the end going to be. So I figured I'd give myself another 40 years or so. And, but I want to do what you've done. <laughs> and maybe vegan could be part of the answer. Hey, it's not bad. I'm telling you, I, I, I think more people should look into it and get off those meds. Yeah. Because, you, know, uh, you know, our people have a history of... Uh, you know, a lot of illnesses that come from diet, High especially, blood pressure. you know, diabetes, yeah, yeah exactly, mm -hmm. and it all stems from diet, and uh, I think if we stop now and take a, what we got to do is we have to eat to live, mm -hmm. and not live, live to, to eat, because when you live to eat, everything just tastes so good, you know, because <laughs> my mama used to cook that stuff, and I still, I still can't believe that I ain't had a steak in like eight months, <laughs> you know, because I love steak, and I grew up in the East Coast, so I love seafood, yeah. and uh, that was the hardest thing for me to give up, but now I have no cravings whatsoever, right. uh, I actually enjoy the taste of stuff that I never thought I would eat, like kale, mm -hmm. I used to hate kale. Now I can actually appreciate the taste of it because my taste buds have kind of opened up a little bit. So, I, I you know, I recommend it for some who, uh, you know, want to maybe lose weight because the first thing it'll do, it'll take all the inflammation out of your body. And that's where we have problems. You know, yeah. we have problems with legs swelling up and, you know. Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's, it's a good thing. But, you know, like I said, I, that's what I do. It not, may not be for everybody, but I'm telling you, it's working uh, for me. Preach, preach, <laughs> preach, preach, <laughs> preach, it's working preach for me. And that's good. <laughs> That's good. That was the uh, 83 12-inch vinyl remix of that. Yeah, I knew that was a remix because I heard that chorus come around three times at the yeah. end there. Whew, that was a big dance song too, man. We loved it. Oh, man. There was some great musicians on that track. George Duke. George Duke, my God. What did George bring to you, sir? George brought me everything. Uh, he, You know, I came from LTD and right. uh, Lord placed me in the hands of George Duke. and. Uh, just about all my hit records as a solo artist was produced by George Duke. So, and he taught me one thing: that simplicity was beauty. Yeah. And he allowed me to learn while I was working with him, and uh, you know, it's, it's, he just had that magic about him. Just a beautiful person, beautiful spirit. One of the most incredible pianists of yeah. all time. Great singer, producer. He did it all. So it was a great loss when he, when George passed yeah, away. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's a Jeffrey Osborne takeover. Jeffrey Osborne, people, Bryson, tomorrow night at the Houston Arena Theater with the Legends Concert Series. Tickets are still available. We encourage you always to uh, come out and see our legends. These are two men that I personally grew up with, with their music, and uh, I'm glad to hear that they're both out and about doing well, and Jeffrey has a new product, a project called Worth It All. We're going to get into right. that. Yeah. Um, but you, you, your, your background is... The musician, you professionally played drums at 15, is that correct? And your dad was a trumpet yeah. player? Yeah, my dad was an incredible trumpet player. Uh, you know, he was one of those guys that was a little bitter because he didn't get a chance to really chase uh. his dream. So, you know, his problem was he had 12 damn kids. I mean, <laughs> damn. 
you know, you got 12 kids and you're living in Providence, Rhode Island. And, uh, you know, so it was hard uh, for him. He yeah, wanted to play in the big bands with like Ellington and Basie. Uh, he knew okay. all the guys and he would sit in with them. But he couldn't make enough money being a member of a 40-piece orchestra. See, people forget that it's Duke Ellington that's making the money. It's right. Count Basie. Wow. These are side guys. And so, you know, with 12 kids, he had to stay home, work three jobs, and he played at night in all the clubs. And so, uh, yeah, I started at an early age of uh, 15. Well, actually, I started playing drums yeah, at 15. And, and drums was the vehicle to get me to where I am right now, to be honest with you. I got my job with LTD as a drummer. Okay. My first show ever I played was 15 with the OJs and that, that I was going that, to ask you that about that, that kind of yeah. made me that made me realize that oh yeah this is what I want to do yeah <laughs> so you're with them on a, a number of hit records or well, L, well the LTD OG. no OJs I just played a live date with them in okay, okay. Providence Rhode Island gotcha gotcha and uh, I played with them for a week there and uh, I got to meet Eddie and all the guys and you know they wanted me to go out on the road but my mother wasn't gonna have that she was like no that ain't gonna happen but uh, it just gave me all the motivation I, I want, I needed. And you, you, you knew inside this is what you Oh, wanted. I knew, yeah. yeah. I knew it anyway, but getting that opportunity just kind of sealed it. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, if I can actually come in. I had to actually audition for the gig and go up and play with a few other drummers, and I'm 15. And I got the job, so that made me feel good on top of that. That it did. Yeah. Right, <laughs> That's amazing. Back. I mean, you could just feel the difference in like real musicians playing these tracks back then. You yeah. know, they it, it breathes. You know, you could feel it. Yes. Well, I mean, we're all human. When you get those guys in the room and they're playing, you know, it's funny. I have percussionists that come in and they're making all these noises while they're playing. <laughs> you got to mute all that out. But that's what you feel yeah. when you get live musicians. You feel the actual breath, and nothing can replace. Nothing can replace that. Jeffrey Osborne, take over. Magic 102.1. Jeffrey's in town with people Bryson this Friday night at the Arena Theater. We are enjoying his afternoon with us. This big band, LTD, when and where did that form? You know, that originally was the backup band for Sam and Dave. Get out! Yeah, they were on the road with Sam and Dave. They called themselves Soul Men Limited. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> and they left Sam and Dave in 1969 started traveling. Most of them were based in North Carolina. Okay. So they started traveling up the coast and uh, just playing in nightclubs. And I met them in my hometown of Providence, Rhode Island. Mm. And you know, there ain't many black people in Providence, Rhode Island. Gotcha. So they said, well, there's like 10 black guys playing in a nightclub. I'm like, oh, I'm going to see them. <laughs> <laughs> so I ran down to watch them play. And uh, the night I got there, the drummer got busted for smoking weed. Come on, man. 1970, smoking weed outside a club was a major offense. Yeah. They locked him up. I walked in, the club owner said, well, can you sit in with them? I said, what are they playing? They're just playing top 40 music. I'm like, yeah. Sat in, played drums, sang a couple songs. I got the job. <laughs> that's, that's how it happened. <laughs> you should have be in the right place to right Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and oh, by the way, uh, I'm going to make sure you get the job because I'm going to arrest the drummer for smoking weed <laughs> in the whitest city in America. <laughs> so you, right. you got to perform, Jeffrey. That that's so a, funny. That, now everybody got marijuana sure. cards. You know, they got, everybody can just walk in and buy marijuana anyway. But, but can you imagine this guy? You know, he. I think he was in jail for at least a year or two. Yeah. Yeah. That is a great story. So we were talking about this, this 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 wonderful organization called LTD. How did that come into in the fruition? Well, uh, like I said, I met them coming through my hometown and uh they were that then called Soul uh Soul Man Limited. They were with uh, Sam and Dave and everybody knows who Sam and Dave was. They were the classic duo of the sixties, seventies. And uh, you know, they talked me into joining the group after I sat in with them and I traveled out to L.A. and we struggled for two years before we finally got a record deal. And we were signed, crazy enough, through Jerry Butler, the Iceman. He had a production deal with A&M Records and we signed to his production deal. And we did our first record in 1972, which nobody knows ever existed. And then the second record, nobody knows ever existed. Right. It was the third record, which was uh, uh, Love to the World. And uh, Love Ballad yes. was on that. Yes, uh, and yes, that's yes. when uh, LTD finally got some serious recognition and it, it kind of exploded with Love Ballad. So, because we're live on Facebook, we shared a story on Facebook that I would like for you to repeat again about this special song that you did in 
Oh, a love ballad. One take. Yeah, well, you know, um, we were working with a couple of producers back in the day, uh, Larry and Ponce Marzell, and uh, they were notorious for showing up late at the studios. So that's that's I'll go into it that way. Anyway, uh, we <laughs> we got there about ten o'clock that night. I'm ready to sing, and they don't show up until like one in the morning. And so we have this long fight in this conference, you know, and we all so around. 3.30, 4 o'clock, we're getting ready to leave. And they said, well, why don't you just go in and try singing the song? And I got it up. I'm like, man, it's 4 o'clock. I'm like, oh, go ahead. I'm like, okay. So I go in. I sing the song. I do one take. And I walk out of the studio. And that's the take that you hear on the, you know, on the record. Wow. That was it. One time done. Which is rare for a lot of artists. But that's yeah. that, that's that's good stuff, man. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like my first takes on all of my songs. Yeah. Uh, I feel like my first take, my first impression is the right one. Mm. Then after that, it's kind of like trying to mimic yourself, mm -hmm. trying to sound like, you know. Uh, but that first take is special. If you get it right, it's special. LTD, a lot of, I mean, great ballads. We're going to play, we're going to play Stranger, so stop. Brando, tell you, I got it, I got it. Uh, and, and I'm going to do my best to get as much of, uh, some of our classics in because you just <laughs> you mean a lot to this city musically dance showmanship flash sound you mean a lot and there are performers like yourself artists I should really rephrase that like a Luther who just perfected a sound you just took it to another level of perfection and you didn't have ass and excuse me do anything you always put all of you into that. And that's what I want to speak to right now, man. The, 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 the dedication to your craft. Right. Well, I mean, you know, that comes from deep within. You know, that comes from that inner, that inner source that you have. Uh, you know, I have that passion. I grew up in a family of 12, the youngest. Everybody in my family sang or played an instrument. So even if I'm singing around the house, I had to bring it because they were bringing it. <laughs> and that's what happens. You know, you grow up in a church and you go to church and they sing and they are bringing it. So we sing, uh, you know, our people, we sing with passion. We sing with feeling. And uh, so, so it, it's easy. It comes from the heart, you know. Uh, and I, I think that's the most important thing. Uh, I know me and George used to have this discussion all the time that I would sing something and I said, George, that's just a little bit wrong. He said, man, I don't care what you say, I feel that. When I feel it like that, it's right. I don't care if the notes are a little out of tune or what. He, George used to call it the trash factor. He said, that's the trash factor, man. You gotta leave the trash factor in. The people are gonna relate to that. <laughs> so it's touching somebody. The most important thing we can do as artists, as singers, is to touch somebody, you know, and I find that uh, my whole thing was that I'm singing a, se a sentence, a phrase. Somewhere within that phrase, I'm going to touch you. And that's in every phrase. So you sing a line, but, that but you put the emphasis on one word in that line to just make people feel that. And that's where it comes from for me. It's a, it's a passion. And if I can't make you feel it, my dad used to tell me that all the time. I used to walk around singing riffs, and I sing all these riffs, and he said, boy, shut up. Don't sing all them riffs. If you can't touch me with a whole note, then shut up. Sing a whole note. Make me feel it. Yeah. That's where it starts. <laughs> and we've had a couple of questions from the Facebook audience about the possible LTD reunion. Oh, uh, a couple of questions. Well, uh, that probably won't, won't happen. Yeah. Uh, it, it was not a good split with me and LTD. It was, okay. you know, there was a lot of friction that went on. It could have been avoided. But it wasn't, uh, and I'm, you know, so it's one of those things where they kind of held me hostage and <laughs> held my own solo project up after, and that's when it got even more ugly. So, you know, I basically said, well, don't ask me to do anything, and they said, well, we don't care because you'll never be anything on your own anyway because it's all about LTD. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold them to that. Yeah. <laughs> so, because this next song I want to play after break. I really don't need no light to see through you. That Ooh. wouldn't have anything to do with that. Right? No, but it came on that first solo record. It did. It? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was saying. I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not the brightest bulb on the tree, but I can't add. It sounds like that might be. All right. So, uh, yeah, and those of us who've been with different organizations, and you, you're cool at the house. 
you start traveling with these cats. Oh, well, you never know. They you do. never really know a person until you share a room with Bro. them. Bro. Woo! I'm and like, back in the day, we used to all have to share rooms on tour. Yeah, your hygiene ain't all that. Come no, on. No, I'm mean, there's a whole lot to that. that ain't right. Just ain't right. <laughs> hey, can I give a shout out to my boy Chris Tucker? Please. Because uh, I just got off the plane and yeah. I ran over here and I ran into Chris Tucker at the airport. Mm -hmm. And that is my boy. I mean, we do a lot of things together. So I want to <laughs> shout out to Chris Tucker. He's out. He's hanging out at Prairie View. Yes, sir. They're, uh, I guess they're going to put in a, a new president is being... Uh -huh. uh, uh, added to the yeah. prayer review, so he's there to uh, support. And I just want to say, Chris Tucker, what's up, my boy? <laughs> Chris is a great guy, man. He is and, a great guy. Yeah, we, 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 we love when you guys get a chance to come through the city. So, in case you don't know, Jeffrey Osborne, the takeover on Magic 102.1, the show tomorrow night with people Bryson at the Arena Theater. What a great Friday night. And, and look, do like the girls used to do for Teddy and them. Buy them panties and bring them, just throw them on stage, and you know, just, I just say, why y'all take off your drawers? And they say, well, we, we bring them with us. We, we, I've been hit by a few of them. Yeah. Some of them roll quarters up in them, some from the back, so oh, they can reach the stage. Reach the stage. <laughs> yeah. Who started that thing? But anyway, that's funny. But I don't need no light. I, mean, I no, really I don't, need, really no don't light. need no light. Now, this comes immediately after your new deal at a and Records <laughs> that you just leave the band that didn't like you in the first place anymore. <laughs> Your first record deal. Who, who, right. you, who are you singing to on this one, sir? Well, you know, that's funny. That was the first single, too. Right. That was the first single off the record. Although it wasn't aimed at, at, at LTD. Uh, it was a fun song. You know, I wrote that song with uh, this guy named Hawk Walensky, all right. who was the keyboard player that wrote all the hits for Rufus. He was in Rufus. He uh, wrote Ain't Nobody. Uh, he wrote. Yeah. He was an incredible writer. So just a chance to sit down and write with him was like a dream come true. And that's the piece we came up with. So, you know, I wish I could make it deeper for you. No, that's Give good. some real good juicy stuff. Well, the connect for me was the, the Rufus and Shaka Khan link. Because here again, these are literally two brand new bands back in the day. Right. We didn't even know how, we didn't even, we couldn't say Shaka Khan. We didn't know what she was. Right. And Rufus. And, and who is Jeffrey Osborne? And what's a Peebo? Uh, what's right. a Peebo? Right? And now... You are literally living legends and probably some of the most sampled artists mm. in the thought process of the industry. On the Wings of Love was a whole bunch of different songs before it became that? Yeah, it was. The first the first set of lyrics was, Don't Deny My Love. And I fought with that. And I sang it. And I, that, that ain't working. That ain't working. <laughs> so I wrote a couple more. And then I finally settled in on On the Wings of Love. And... Right. Uh, I knew right away that that was the the right lyric, you yeah. know. So I kind of sat back, you know, because us songwriters, we we fantasize of all kind of things. We sit back, we think about this and that. I kind of like pictured love and flight, and I was like, what would love and flight feel like? And what would that sound like? What? And so I ended up coming up with "On the Wings of Love," and uh, big. That's the biggest song. That's, that's a career song. I had two career songs. One was "Love Ballad" with LTD, and the second career song was "On the Wings of Love." Wow. As a solo artist. I said, I, I would have thought maybe Woo 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 or... Well, Woo 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 was uh, definitely a signature song <laughs> because I became known as the Woo Woo Ooh. Man. <laughs> oh, oh, that's funny. So, you, so let's talk about the Woo 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 Man. The Woo Woo Man. You're wow. in, uh, what is the third, fourth album now? This is out of Emotional. Yeah, exactly. So and, uh, I wish I had written that song. That's all I can say. I didn't oh, wow. write that okay. one. So it was it was uh, written by a couple of guys named uh, Bruce Roberts and Andy Goldmark, and they brought it to me. And I was working with I was working with the producer Richard Perry, and that wasn't a very fun working relationship either. But okay. we won't go into that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, he brought this song to me, and I I loved the song as soon as I sang it. I brought it home, you know, because you know we end up with. 12, 13 songs, and I'm always playing them around the house, sure. see how the family likes them. My daughter was like three years old at the time, yeah. and she said, Daddy, play that woo-woo song again. And I said, that's not, that's not what it's called. You but, should be mine. And she said, no, nah, it's not. That's the woo-woo -woo song. song. <laughs> like, I called the songwriter. I said, guess what? This is now called the woo-woo song. <laughs> we talked about him a little earlier, but I, I really, George Duke. George Duke had some amazing music within himself, but I remember 
George was a fusion cat. He just liked to mix yeah. and tinker with stuff, did he not? Oh, yeah. George was brilliant, man. George, you know, played with Frank Zappa. He goes from Saint Frank Zappa to, I mean, his his music uh, vocabulary and uh, his, he, he's just amazing, man. Yeah. I, I think he had perfect pitch. He always told me he didn't, but I know he had perfect pitch because yeah. he used to be in a session and he'd tell the second chair string uh, violin player that his G string was out of tune with 40 strings in the room. You're going to point out one. So I'm like, oh, dude. You know, that's that's a blessing and a curse at the same time. Because then you can't listen to music without saying, oh, that's out of tune. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> People were very compared to <laughs> And he produced your first and second album, correct? He produced my first three three albums. Okay. Uh, first three solo albums, yeah. All right. And then he produced uh, my last uh, jazz record that I did also. And, and a Christmas record. And we've done a lot. I've done a lot with George. Yeah, yeah. He was a very special guy. So... <clears throat> In the in, in in the growth of the singer, the 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 Teddy is gone. Luther obviously is gone. Uh, you've got a you left. Yeah, Peebles here. Peebles. Howard Hewitt's still around. Right. The great singer of soul, and I, I won't declassify you as R and B because those who don't understand the rhythm or why they sang the blues to get to the R and B is a whole other show. Oh yeah. But soul singer singers who sing from the soul, yeah. sing from your heart, that passion. You, 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 what's it like to be with a group of men who love like you love and sing like you sing? Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, to, you know, to share the stage with people like Peebo and Freddie and, you know, I've done shows before with just about everybody. I mean, you go back with the old Jays and, you know, Eddie LeVert was one of my favorite singers because he yeah. used to bring it every night. I just love people that bring it yeah. every single night. And uh, it's it's no better feeling in the world. It's, it's like basically living your dream. Hmm. I mean, I grew up standing on the street corners singing all the Temptation songs, you know, and the next thing you know, I meet the Temptations and I'm singing with them on stage. And it's, it's literally living your dream. So if you believe in what you really do and you go ahead and you get that craft and culture it and develop it, uh, I think the most important thing is trying to find a niche where you don't sound like anybody else. Because that's, and I listen to today's radio, I can't sometimes tell who is who. Sure. And uh, that was the beauty about when the era we came up in. There was there was the Marvins and the Teddies mm -hmm. and the Smokies and you knew their voice as soon as you heard them. They were so identifiable and I think that's what's missing today. And then, I, you know, I, and I, it's funny I say this but the real men singers are gone. Uh, I listen to the radio now and every guy is trying to sing higher than every girl there is out there. There are all these like falsetto singers. I'm like, what is going on? Where are the real men? There's no like real male voices. I don't know why what's happening but it seems uh, it seems like uh it's a it's a different type of male vocalist out there now you know well to your point you're absolutely correct and 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 i remember things my mama told me because i used to frustrate over a lot of stuff and she says baby do do this for you remember everything's cyclical so that cycle eventually come back around and now right, you, you and i are going to be blessed to to hear it I think so, because like I said, I'm going to be around for another 40. I'm going to run on and see what the end <laughs> oh, I'm going to be there with you. Yeah, so we're going another we 40. we plants. At least. <laughs> Back there with you. <laughs> so let's talk about Worth It All. Worth It All. Yeah, it's uh, scheduled to be released on the 25th of May, the album. But, yeah, that is, I call it an album. It's called CD. You know, it's sure. all my age. CD, whatever you want to call it now. And understand, <clears throat> vinyl is making a comeback. Yeah, I love it too. Isn't that something? I love to see that. Yeah. Talk about full well, circle. <laughs> vinyl still sounds better to yes. me, you know. But yeah, it's a project that I've worked on. It's a, it's actually kind of old to me because I started this project uh, almost two years ago. Oh, wow. Uh, signed with this label, Mac Avenue Records, and we discussed uh, doing a smooth jazz record because I had just done a jazz record. And uh -huh. As I began to write, I realized that this is not a smooth jazz record. <laughs> That's why I told him, I think I want to go back to my roots and do a old school R&B record, a record for grown people, you, you know. And so that's basically how it, it, it came about. It's tailor-made. It wasn't made to sound like today's youthful records. It's made to sound like the old school R&B records. And, uh, you know, uh, it's a double entendre with the title. It's, it's a title track called Worth It All. 
but also I felt that uh, I hadn't had a record of original songs in mm. over 10 years and I finally put this package together and to me it was just it's it was worth it all just waiting for it and getting it out so well would you do the honors and introduce the title track to your CD okay well this is from the new CD worth it all it's the title track it's called worth it all and it's one of those stories that's about you know sometimes you gotta go through trials and tribulations uh, to really find what you that what you have is worth saving you know because a lot of people they run and they go here and they go there but really it's worth staying and repairing it because love is worth it all. LTD, share my love. You gonna sing a little bit, Mr. Jeffrey? We, what you mm. feeling, sir? I'm so tired of being lonely. I want to be loving you only. So many girls have crossed my path. Come on, man. But I could not last. <laughs> I needed you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Only human. Oh, Jeffrey yeah. Osborne. What well, would wrap it up the takeover? Wow. Well, that was quick. Yes, sir. That happened so fast. What happened? Well, you know the old saying. Time flies when you're yeah, what? When you're having fun. And we're having a great time. Oh, it was great, man. Yes, sir. So tomorrow night at the Arena Theater here in Houston with people Bryson. Uh, any other tour dates or social media we can follow you on Twitter? Well, you can go to jeffreyosborne.com and it has uh, all my dates on there. And uh, you can kind of follow what I'm doing, where I'm going. I go right from uh, tomorrow night to... Uh, to Florida, actually. I have a show in Florida, uh, the Sea Breeze Jazz Fest. I'm actually part of that. And there's, is people on that? Yeah. I think he's on that. Some of me with people again on Saturday yeah. night. Okay. So, yeah. Something's <laughs> cooking. So, yeah, there's a couple of things happening here. But uh, uh, we're going to have fun tomorrow night. Yeah. We're going to have fun. I'm going to try to bring it as many things as I can to the table tomorrow night. Well, you have a you have a toolbox full of unique items. And this is what we love about your music. You can. You can love on us, you can you can help us love and make love and be loved and you can help us go, Oh, I don't need to see I can see through you like a silk screen. You thought you fooled me, I, I got you. And why you wanna be mad about all that? Straighten up. But the fun part about this uh this this night will be some of the music that Jeffrey plays from one of the best big bands of the 70s and of course that would be LTD. Oh yeah. And just learning how this, getting the, the, the Carolina story straight finally for me because All right. yeah. through th through the transition of stuff, uh, well you know Jeffrey met him in North Carolina. I said Jeffrey's not from North Carolina, he's from, <laughs> he's from Rhode Island. Yeah and I met him in Rhode Island. Right. They did come from, a lot of them came from uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. Out of the Carolinas. Yeah. All right my friend, well as we wrap this up, uh, we hope my listeners, folk on Facebook Live, Instagram have enjoyed this. Leon, Brando, thank you for your love. And uh, to the Magic family, we can go back a little old school. From the People Station, Magic 102.1, I just want to... Uh-oh, watch out. Drop a little funk Jam. over here. Huh? Jam? Say what? Uh, we going back, baby. Yes, sir. Let's get mm. it in. From the People Station, Magic 102.1. Larry, I'm hanging out with Larry.